We're glad you're still watching Week in Focus. In other news, police on Friday morning at around 10 a.m. arrested David Sejusa and detained and interrogated him but later released him on caution. Sejusa was arrested near Nakumat roundabout as he was coming from Centenary Bank along with his aide and two border border cyclists were all released on caution. We have the report. The former director and coordinator of security forces, General David Sejusa, was arrested by police at Nekumad roundabout at 10.50 a.m. for allegedly inciting and making unlawful procession, but later released at 4.30 p.m. If it's me you are after, uh, if you are, it's me you are after, let me walk to the police station but not the car. So I got out of the car and said, let me go to the police station. And then they said, no, even the car must go to the police station. So I was brought in and, and det detained without being told what charge. When I asked them what is the charge, they said, you excited the public, that you are, you are charged for exciting the public. According to Regional Police Commander Siraj Bakareke, Sajusa made a statement, but no charges were preferred on him. Sergio, sir, he wakes up from his home and he says he's going to organize and address people around the Mapera near State Square that he, he also wants to begin his to launch his presidential BD. Can you imagine? So he moves with the border borders, he moves with the other people, he moves with the other members from the FDC with the placards. So he was approached by DPC, so when he was approached, he told the DPC that he is also, also intending to launch his presidential BD 2016. Of course that one cannot be accepted. This is a holding place. You have committed your crime in uh, what is that police station, the big one? CPS, 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 Central Police Station. So you are here for safe custody. <laughs> I said, but to safe custody for what? They said yes for safe custody. As I said, this is a safe house now. They said, what is a safe house? I said, a safe house is where you are dumped without rights. And uh, so anyway, they, they, I called my lawyers. Uh, then they said the office in charge of CPS will come here to tell me uh, why I have been arrested. After long hours of interrogation at Ginger Road Police Post, the Kampala Metropolitan Commander, Haruna Isavidye, arrived at the police post and sanctioned Sejusa's release and cautioned him on public order rules and to always work with the police if he has an agenda put forward. And I told him this is a new situation because we need change in this country to organize for that change. And these are really symptoms when you see a person like me just passing through the city, being arrested and dumped at the police station and so on. And yet they are embarrassed because they don't know what to do with me even after that. Because uh, then what? Uh, what do you do? Because uh, this is... Uh, so, so far, so I'm going home. No, people, people, Ugandans should know that there is a rule of, law, a rule of law in this country. And if the politician, you have an intention, of holding a rally, of launching your, your mass, and then we guide you and we even protect you, you know. Upon his release, former spy chief and coordinator of security services, David Sejusa, stubbornly challenged the police by doing exactly what caused his arrest and marched with his supporters and border border sympathizers from and around Ginger Road police cheering until he was carried away to attend to another function political event in Kampala.
The Central Executive Committee of the National Resistance Movement Party that was expected to have an emergency sitting on Friday to grill its former Secretary General Amama Mbabazi, who declared his intentions to stand for president, was called off and postponed under unclear circumstances. The impromptu meeting was scheduled to take place at State House in Tebe, chaired by the party chairman, Yoweri Kagutam Seveni, but fell on its weight when intelligence fillers briefed to the president that, Mbaba, that Amama Mbabazi had left the country to the United Kingdom and had been interviewed with BBC and revealed more damning information on the worrying state of Ugandan affairs. NRM Secretary General Kasule Lumumba told WBS's Timothy Sibasi that the meeting was called off until next month with a different agenda altogether. We were supposed to have SEC meeting today, but it was postponed because we were supposed to discuss the progress report on the roadmap. And I felt as Secretary General, I requested the chairman to postpone, and he has postponed to 1st July, so that I have a comprehensive report about registration. They had called SEC today, and yet we closed registration on Wednesday in Ibusoga and Western Uganda. So we have collected our data and now they've started entering data in the computers. I want to have a comprehensive report to give sake by the end of this month. I'm the one who requested for time. In a related development, police issued strong warning to former Prime Minister John Patrick Amama Mbabazi over inciting violence and violating his party's constitutional framework. The warning came at a time after Mbabazi's announcement contesting the upcoming 2016 NRM and presidential elections. Police published Fred Enanga say the police received information on how road youths from within the city centre and across the country were planning and are still planning to cause commotion. Today morning, analysts, political giants, social media and the entire newsrooms across the country woke up in a shock to hearing a campaign recording of the former Prime Minister John Patrick Kamama Mbabazi on how he had declared himself as a potential candidate for the 2016 presidential elections. The recording triggered enormous debates from different circles with intelligence units holding constant meetings in the course of the day. But to police, these political gimmicks won't be tolerated. The police published Fred Nanga says the police is determined to arrest and quash any illegal pricings that will surface in the country without police consent. Provided uh, you have uh, an arrangement where you are supposed to uh, hold uh, public meetings, you want to carry out uh, a procession and so on. It simply guides us that everything should be done in an orderly manner so that you don't uh, cause distortions, you don't distract uh, the activities of uh, other citizens who don't subscribe to uh, your business. So uh, that is why we are saying that however much these rights uh, they are to be enjoyed, they should be enjoyed without uh, prejudicing the rights of the others uh, or uh, the public interest. Enanga says it is not yet time to hold political campaigns and that anybody found distributing posters, t-shirts containing campaigners or any campaign related material risks being arrested. Where there is non-compliance non with the law, uh, then it renders any meetings, any processions, any demonstrations illegal and the organizers shall definitely be liable uh, for prosecution by the, by the police. By press time, Enanga says the force had managed to arrest three suspects, one from Kabale district and the other two along Ginger Road in the city centre distributing t-shirts bearing John Patrick Mamambabas' picture. He says the suspects now under detention in different police stations will battle charges related to promoting public nuisance and causing commotion across the country. And uh, he will be charged uh, under the urban authority rule uh, where of course uh, he didn't get uh, uh, permission or consent to proceed with this act. As we also look at uh, 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 under the Penal Code Act, uh, we shall also be looking at uh, uh, acts of uh, public uh, being uh, a nuisance. 
in the northern part of the country, the mission was successful in the districts of Soroti, Gulu, Kitugum and the neighboring West Nile districts of Moyo and Ajumani. Along Masaka Road, police as well intercepted a car model Noah containing over 900 t-shirts, stickers, mathematical sets and calendars all containing Mbabazi's photos ready to be distributed. The government attorney general Frederick Hindi revealed that Mbabazi's wish to consult with the party electorates before the electoral commission gives its roadmap on nominations of presidential aspirants and the campaign roadmap has no legal implication at all. But the Secretary General of the ruling NRM, Justin Kasule Lumumba, says his predecessor, Amama Mbabazi, misinterpreted the law for independent aspirants. Lumumba claims that Mbabazi was supposed to follow laid procedures in the NRM party constitution for presidential aspirants first within the party structures before writing to the Electoral Commission. Timothy Sibasi interacted with the Kasule Lumumba as she appealed to Mbabazi to share all his letters to the party chairman and the electoral commission as a matter of procedure. The former secretary general of the ruling NRM, John Patrick Emaman Babazi, who early this week broke the silence to contest against the party chairman and subsequently for the presidency of the country on Thursday this week, shared with the electoral commission his campaign consultation strategy. His campaign consultation strategy letter to the electoral commission chairman has since generated controversies with some legal brains faulting however the government attorney general frederick hindi says mbabazi campaign strategy letter to the electoral commission has no legal implication a presidential aspirant can consult can consult his supporters for instance if that uh, political a presidential aspirant is making a manifesto, okay, is making strategies for being elected, can consult his supporters. But the ruling NREM party secretary general Justin Kasulel Mumba holds a different legal opinion, pointing to misinterpretation of the law for independent aspirants to suit his interest. The way he has, what he's doing should be done by an independent. Because when they say in a political that in the in the in the presidential election law is that when they say that the candidate should present a manifesto and the colours, so you either present them as a candidate in as 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 a party or you present them as an individual. So for him to write that he's going to do consultation, yes, he's according to the practice in, in political parties, he's not yet a candidate of any political party. With this legal technicality, what challenge does it pose to the Electoral Commission? The only question that still bothers me is if you are a, a, a candidate aspiring through a party, okay, say you are aspiring presidential candidate through DP, through, UP, through, through UPC, through NRM as a party. My understanding is that in order to go out to meet the general public as an aspirant of a party, the party must be in the know The party should really release you to go and do that. We are in a multi-party dispensation, so there are procedures that have to be followed by those who want to be candidates in parties and those who want to be the candidates as independents. So from if you observe the letter which Honorable Mama Mbabazi, first of all, as a, as a, as a NRM, SEC has not yet given us guidelines for primaries and also for elections of structures. Despite of this, Lumumba says the declaration of Mbabazi, a former secretary general of the party, to contest against incumbent Museveni for the highest position within the party structure, pose no challenge 
to her office. No, there, there is no challenge that it poses to me. It instead empowers me and makes me a, a very powerful secretary general when the two big weights come up to contest. In February 2014, the political organ of the ruling party, the NRM caucus convened at the National Leadership Institute in Changkwanzi and declared incumbent Museveni as the sole candidate of the party in the 2016 presidential polls. This position caused controversies within the party structures and led to the summoning of the supreme organ of the party, the National Executive Committee, NEC, in December 2014, which ended up mysteriously ending the reign of Mbabasi as the Secretary General of the party and partially conquered with caucus position of sole candidature. However, speaking to WBS, Kasule Lumumba denied that NEC, neither SEC, have ever endorsed Museveni as a sole candidate. SEC has never made any recommend, has never taken a decision to forward, to recommend any names to NEC. NEC has never taken a decision to recommend names to national conference. That was an expression of the caucus. Apparently, Mbabazi is out of the country on a special mission to solicit for financial support for his presidential bid, as well as convincing the international community to accept his change Uganda agenda. Timothy Basi, WBS Television, Parliament. Kampala and surrounding areas, despite the news of the analog digital switch off, were not surprised by UCC when they switched off all televisions in Kampala and surrounding areas. Uganda Communications Commission UCC and Signet, the distributor, switched off all analog broadcasting televisions ahead of Wednesday, 17th June 2015, international deadline. We have the report. An abrupt switch off of all television stations in Kampala has got many Ugandans complaining and requesting for an extension from UCC, despite not being surprised. In case you own an analog TV, you're not watching any TV unless you are digital. We woke up to the bad news of digital migration. We expected the deadline to be extended, but that wasn't the case with UCC. We moved to the streets and talked to people about their thoughts on digital migration. I think Uganda is not ready. Because, for instance, now if like I have uh, my grandmother in, in the village, is not... Uh, capable of buying a decoder. It was not right for them to do that thing, as yet like that. We need more time. We are still developing. I don't think all the viewers are, are really ready, because at the moment, as you see, people have different financial problems. Eh? So this financial problem will come, will come when it comes to like buying decoders, paying the subscription fee to this service provider, like this service provi providers which are around. UCC insists the exercise that starts two days to the 17th June deadline was meant to ensure they achieve their deadline. We gave public notice to issue the public notice to the public that come 15th we begin the switch off and today is the 15th day of June 2015. We have effected it. I'm sure a number of analog TV sets, uh, I mean transmission, are off air right now. We are strictly trying to abide by international standards, international agreements. We believe uh, the country is ready to transit into that. All what we need is uh, people to embrace the process. The June 17th deadline was set by the 198 member nations of the International Telecommunications Union, ITU meeting on June 16, 2006, and according to Fredo Tunu, the head of communication at UCC, in 2006, Uganda, like any other members of International Telecommunication Union, ITU, became a signatory to a treaty. Fredo Tunu further explains that the switch-off will be in three phases. Phase one, that has started today, has got Kampala and surrounding areas switched off. Phase 2 commences on July 31st, while Phase 3 on August 30th. This policy was embraced by the Ugandan cabinet in 2011. Digital broadcasting takes two standards. Digital broadcasting takes two standards. 
digital satellite broadcasting, which requires use of a satellite dish to capture data transmissions from long distances. The other is digital terrestrial broadcasting, where a consumer requires an outdoor antenna to capture signals from the signal distributor and set-top box decoders to convert them into images. Today, the 15th day of June 2015, televisions in Kampala and surrounding areas have been switched off as we get closer to the global deadline of digital migration, 17th June 2015. Have you gone digital? All you have to do is purchase a set-top box or a digital TV. Nabasa Innocent, WBS TV. In a related development, the 15th June 2015 abrupt switch-off of analog TVs got many Ugandans bitter and asking for free decoders from government. The switch-off left many Ugandans opting for movies instead of the costly pet TV. We have the details. Namara Rose, a resident of Chitintale, Kampala, is one of the most affected Ugandans. She says this was an unconsidered decision for the low-income earners. And when I take up, I'm going to be off. Then put it up. I think I'm going to be a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit. Every month. I want them to help us to, to switch on the TVs because people don't have money for buying DSTVs and decoders. Uganda Communications Commission UCC and Signet, the signal distributor, switched off all analog broadcasting televisions on Monday 15th June 2015, ahead of the 17th June 2015 international deadline. This did not go well for the broadcasters either. They believed many Ugandans were not ready for pay TV. The Chairman National Broadcasters Association, Kin Karisa, explains. The way it was done, uh, government would have taken some time to sort out these challenges and then we migrate. On the side of the viewers, our viewers actually, they are parting out with some good chunk of money. First to buy a set of box, which might be a pay TV one, because the free to air set of boxes are not available in the market. If you get a chance and get one, it will be very expensive. So we think that government would have done more to enable our viewers access affordable set of boxes to enable them watch free to air. Consumers are demanding Signet and UCC to avail affordable and enough set of boxes for low income earners who cannot afford pay TV. Broadcasters are currently engaging with government to help Ugandans migrate better. This week also, government suspended a ban on production and use of polythene bags, commonly known as Buvera. The ban, which took immediate effect on Thursday, will spend six months and in this case instituted a committee of cabinet ministers to review it. Addressing journalists at his offices in Kampala, Minister for Information and National Guidance, Major General Jim Wezi, said the move followed intense consultations with various stakeholders operating in this Field. In April this year, Environment Body National Environment Management Authority announced implementation of the ban on polythene bags of less than 30 microns. The operation saw the confiscation of Buveras from various supermarkets as well as closing down 
of uh, polythene production factories. In the recent months, Ugandans had changed as they were using polythene bags to carry their items. The ban on Kavera was first announced in 2009 budget speech by the then finance minister, Saida Bumba, urging that they pose a danger to the environment by degrading the soil and blocking the drainage system. The Mufti of uh, Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, Mufuti Shaban Mubaji, urged Muslims to use this period of Ramadan to unite and forgive those who wrong them. Mubaji asked Muslims to pray for their fellow brothers and sisters in countries facing wars and instead resort to peace and reconciliation instead of fighting. Today is a second day, but also first Juma in the holy month of Ramadan as Muslims continue to fast and pray. This is evident at Old Kampala Mosque as masses poured in to celebrate the start of holy month. The Mufti of Uganda, Sheikh Ramadan Shaban Mubadje, while presiding over Juma prayers at the Old Kampala Mosque today, has appealed to fellow Muslims to fast in regard to respecting the fourth pillar of Islam, but also use it to pray for their brothers and sisters as well, forgiving each other. This month of Ramadan, that Allah forgives them their shortcomings and rewards them with Jannah. For us, we are blessed that we are in the holy month of Ramadan, the month of Allah's mercy. 2015 year has seen misery inflicted on Muslims with murders of Muslims' clerics. He says... 2015 year has seen misery inflicted on Muslims with murders of Muslim clerics, but was hopeful police was working tirelessly to identify the criminals. So it raised concerns and uh, we as Muslims we feel that maybe there is something taking place uh, which we should do, not rush into making uh, conclusions. The Mufti urged Muslims to simply say one word, I'm fasting, to any person who fights you during this month of Ramadan instead of using violent means to settle differences. We take another short break, but stay tuned. WBS Week in Focus returns shortly. <laughs> 